Good morning, everyone. We have made it to day nine. Um, and today we have the beautiful intercession for all of us of John Paul the Great, St. John Paul II. Um, and the little subtext is a prayer after communion. Um, so yeah, it's Sunday. I hope you had a good day at Mass today. If you've already been, um, December 1st, we are well into Advent now. And so today, I'm gonna we're gonna do a little test today. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about the school of silence. Or maybe we won't talk about it too much. I was gonna see how long I could do that without getting too awkward with our, our wonderful cameraman, McKay. Um, yeah, the school of silence. I don't know what, what you were taking from the readings today, but um, I I know, like one from my own life, I don't know if, I remember I, when I did Exodus 90, which is this little group we did with a bunch of guys. Um, it's like mainly for husbands and fathers and obviously priests um, of a thing of like a, a, the aesthetic life, like a, a lot of different penances and things we did. I don't know. You can look it up on your own. Exodus 90. It's a great program. Um, but one of the things during one of the things that we did was it challenged you to turn the radio off in the car. And he actually mentions that in, in this section of the book um, to try to do that. But to me, I remember when I did that, it was like one of the most fruitful penances I'd ever really given myself or really, I mean, they gave it to me, but I didn't have to do it, but I chose to do it. And cause you know, around here, whenever you drive somewhere, it's like at least 15 minutes just to the store. But oftentimes it's like 45 minutes to an hour to go somewhere, to go to Destin or to go to Fort Walton or Panama city for things, you know, just that's how it is when you live around here. But um, but to do that every time with the radio off and to experience that silence, like I get, you know, a lot of silence at my home, you know, there's nobody else, there's father Raja there, but you know, he's a pretty quiet guy and my dogs. Um, but most of the time, like I do experience a lot of silence. Um, but this was like a special thing because it wasn't where I normally have silence, which was really beneficial. I felt to me. So when I would get in my car, um, and, and go somewhere just to have that, that time just to think and to pray and to be more aware of my surroundings and all these things. It was really great. Like, um, but when, you know, when COVID happened, there was a, a theologian or somebody, some churchy person, you know, made a, a reflection. Actually, I think they were a philosopher, like a modern day philosopher. And they mentioned the fact that the reason we were dealing with COVID so poorly um, initially anyway, and I think pretty much the whole time and still today, like, cause we're humans and we're, you know, terrible a lot of the time. But um, he mentioned that like, the world today has forgotten like what solitude was, like what silence even was, because it's so driven by loud noise, you know, from technology stuff to industry and to whatever, like our world is just loud and, and we don't know how to be silent. So when that first, like everybody go to your rooms and shut the doors and don't touch anybody or talk to anybody or breathe on anybody, like that was all really challenging. Cause like, we didn't know what to do with ourselves. We didn't know how to sit in a room by ourselves. Like we needed our device. We needed this and that, like we needed all the noise. Cause we're so used to the noise. And today we're being invited, like come sit down and be quiet and just deal with yourself. Are like, are you okay with yourself and who you are? Do you know who you are? <laughs> do you, do you know yourself? You know, it's one of the old classic when you start studying philosophy you know, every priest studied philosophy before we, we studied theology. And I'll always remember, I think everybody remembers from Socrates, like the first, I guess, kind of famous philosopher was his phrase, his motto was, was know thyself. And, um, and I don't know if we are very good at that anymore. Um, because the only way to know ourselves is to be with ourself in, in the interior, like to be quiet, to learn silence, to know it. And then eventually it's supposed to turn into prayer where only in God do we really discover our true self. And that's what the school of silence can do for us. You know, that's what can, that's, that's the only way we can learn what, what true communion is. Uh, like, if you know, like one of my favorite examples of how this works with the Lord is that, you know, the, the people that you love the most and that you're closest with, they're the easiest to like sit in a car and, and just go and not, you don't have to talk. You don't have to have music. You can just be together and exist at the same time in the same place. And it's a really like, you feel so comfortable and safe in a place like that. Um, one of my best friends, Father Thomas Kennel, he's uh, the pastor at St. John's in Panama City. Um, we've gone on like millions of road trips over the last you know twenty years, and um, and he's just one of those people that I can we can just sit in a car and just go. Like we talk sometimes, 
sometimes we don't we listen to music sometimes sometimes we don't but like we're able just for hours to just sit there and be together and it's a beautiful thing like we're real brothers and um but yeah so this school of silence is where we learn that that type of relationship and and the lord you know is is calling us to be with him in that in that interior silence so um yeah i thought it was a great thing to think about and pray about today um so yeah the question that we leave with ourselves and to ask ourselves is do we have this in our life at all. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.